Okay, so in this video we're going to review the metric system and also scientific notation because those are things that we use all the time in chemistry and also in science. Okay, so when we talk about the metric system, the metric system is used essentially to create ease when comparing units. So when we look at uh, the system that we have here in America, we talk about uh, pounds, we talk about ounces, we talk about cups. Well, how many ounces are in a cup? How many um, pints are in a gallon? How many ounces are in a pound? And some of those things you just remember, but a lot of those things sometimes you have to go and look up. The metric system is not like that. It's built on powers of 10. So it's essentially, it's just easier to use. So we have base units and then we have prefixes. So our base units would be things like meters, joules, uh, liters, grams. So all of those things are going to be our base unit. Uh, and then we have prefixes, which are based off of powers of 10, and that tells you how many times you need to either multiply or divide by 10. So our base units, so the, some of the most common ones, are going to be the meter for length. Okay, so a, the, about a, a meter is a little bit more than a yard. Uh, when we talk about mass, we use grams. One gram is about what a raisin would feel like. And then we talk about volume. Volume is how much space something takes up. So we talk about volume with liters. Okay, so it's about a half of a two liter bottle. Okay, so our basic prefixes are gonna be kilo, hecta, deca, deci, centi, milli. Okay, so we have our base units. So kilo, hecta, deca, and then we have or I'm sorry, we have our prefixes, then we have our base unit, and then deci, centi, milli. Okay, so everything to the left of the base unit is a larger unit. Everything to the right of the base unit will be a smaller unit. So when we're looking at this, if you know the order, um, you can get all of the conversion factors. And when I say a conversion factor, I mean, okay, how many kilometers um, is equal to how many meters? How many decimeters is equal to how many hectometers? Um, so if you know the order and you know that everything is based on powers of 10, you can get all of those uh, conversion factors. All right, so the way that I do it is I say, okay, if I wanna know how many meters are in a kilometer, I say, okay, kilometer, and a meter are equal to each other, but how many of this and how many of this? So the way that you do this is you say, okay, which one is the biggest unit? Well, everything to the left is gonna be bigger. So kilo is bigger than the meter here. So one kilometer should be equal to lots of meters. So now I just count how many times over is the meter from the kilometer. So one, two, three. So since it's three spaces away, it's gonna be three zeros. Okay, so now I could do this with all of them. So I could do hectometer and then hectometer with the meter. Okay, again, hectometer is bigger than a meter, so I count. Um, well, okay, so hectometer is bigger, so there's one hectometer, uh, and one hectometer should be equal to lots of meters. So count one, two. It's two spaces, so two zeros, 100 meters. Now you can do that with all of the base units and then all of the other prefixes too. So these are the important things to know, but you can also use this trick to figure out how many hectometers would be equal to how many decimeters. And then deca would be with DK, by the way. Okay, so we have hectometers and decimeters. Well, which one is bigger? Hecta, because it's more towards the left, so one hectometer is equal to lots of decimeters, so now count. One, two, three, three zeros. So a thousand. So let's do that one more time. Let's do centimeters, and then we'll do kilometers. Okay, so we have a kilometer, and then we have a centimeter. Okay, so which one is bigger? Kilometer is bigger, so one kilometer is equal to lots of centimeters. One, two, three, four, five. So that would be five zeros. One, two, three, four, five. 
so 100,000 centimeters. Okay, now, these are our basic uh, prefixes, and you do need to know this information. You need to know how to get from kilometers to meters, and how to get from centimeters to millimeters. You need to know how to do that, and I would prefer you not use the magic math method, which is to move the decimal point. I do want you to know how to get these conversion factors because that can be important for later. Now, micrometers, micrometers, and then nanometers. So this, these are just uh, ones to know. Uh, typically, they're going to be found on reference sheets if you need them, though. So one nanometer is equal to 10 to the ninth me, uh, meters, negative ninth meters, or you can just say the opposite. You could say that. Um, one meter would be equal to 10 to the ninth nanometers. That's the same thing. Okay, so one micrometer is equal to 10 to the negative six meters. Again, I could do the same thing. I can say that one uh, meter is equal to 10 to the, or to the positive six micrometers. All right, so let's also talk about scientific notation. So scientific notation uh, is used a lot in this class because we have very small numbers, we also have very large numbers. So when you have a very large number and you're typing that into a calculator, you're, there's a tendency to make a lot of mistakes. You can miss a zero, um, and then that would completely throw off your calculation. So using scientific notation helps to prevent that. Okay, so scientific notation is going to be where you have uh, some number with only one number in front of the decimal point and times 10 to some power, okay? So when you convert into scientific notation, you're basically gonna take the decimal point and then you're going to move it until there's only one digit to its left. So you want one number, just one, in front of the decimal point. So if I were looking at this, I'm gonna take this decimal point, I'm gonna do one, two, three, and then I keep going because I still have two numbers in front of it, and I go one more time. I'm gonna go one more time until it's 6.5. So now I move the decimal point four times, so it's going to be times 10 to the fourth. Now, the exponent, whether it's going to be positive or negative, well, if it's a large number, it should be a positive exponent. So this number is bigger than one, it has to be a positive exponent, okay? If it's a small number, so if it's less than one, so if it's like some number like this, this is less than one, it's going to have a negative exponent. So anything like that, it's gonna have a negative exponent. So large numbers get positive exponents, small numbers get negative exponents. And they only include something called significant figures. So when we're looking at this, we're gonna convert this into scientific notation. So take the decimal point, okay? Move it until there's only one number in front of it. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's 2.4 times 10, and I moved it six times. Well, it's gonna be positive because this number is larger than one. Let's do this one. So one, two, three. I moved it three times until there was one number in front of the decimal point. So now I moved it three times. It's gonna be a negative exponent because this number is less than one. Okay, so now let's convert these into uh, expanded form. So we're gonna move the decimal point five times we're also gonna move it so that the decimal point is in front of the seven because if it's negative, that means it's a number less than one. So here's a seven. One, two, three, four, five. All right, now at this point, I can't just leave it like that. I'm gonna use zeros as placeholders. So that five doesn't mean that there are five zeros. It means that we have moved the decimal point five times. Be careful with that. Okay, so now, and again, it's also going to be in front of the seven instead because it's a negative exponent. Negative exponents, we should have numbers less than one. So now let's do this one. It's a positive exponent, so I'm gonna make it larger. So I'm gonna be one, two, three, four. 
So now I'm going to use zeros as placeholders. One, two, three. And again, that four doesn't mean four zeros. It means that I've moved the decimal point four times. So it should be 62,000.